Start of the minor league baseball offseason. Steven Cusimano here with our first Somerset sit down of the offseason, catching up with Yankees pitching prospect Richard Fitz, who since we last spoke was actually named the Eastern League Pitcher of the Year. So first off, Richard, congratulations on that honor. And I hope the offseason has treated you well so far. Thank you. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, yeah, offseason has been great. Been traveling a little bit. Got back home, kind of settled down a little bit. It's been good. It's really good. Let's see. Where are you right now? Because I, I obviously from Alabama. I mean, what have the last couple of weeks been like with traveling? And, and I guess uh, where do you stand now? Just a couple of weeks out of the season. Um, back in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, pretty much where I, where I grew up, me and my wife are in an apartment. I'm working out and kind of catching up with some friends while I'm here. Any big plans for the off season? I, I guess the, the thing I love about baseball is that you've got all the big holidays during the off season, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas oh, yeah. and everything, a anything big as far as vacations or anything planned? Oh, nothing huge, but we got, uh, I got a few, few friends that, uh, uh, that I know they're getting married. Other baseball guys, they have their weddings coming up uh, just because it's the off season now. So uh, traveling around for that and uh, doing all that, but nothing too crazy, just kind of relaxing and uh, enjoying our time together here at home. Well, that's great. And, and we, I went off with the fact that you were named, obviously, the Eastern League Pitcher of the Year. And I got to start off by asking, because you weren't here when that announcement was made. So how did you find out? When did you find out? And kind of what is your reaction to that? Oh, I was getting lunch with my wife uh, before going and probably just shopping or like grocery shopping or something. And uh, uh, I saw the tweet uh, that Somerset posted saying that I was named the pitcher of the year and I was pumped. Uh, I was like, and I was like, Anna Grace, that's my wife's name. I was like, I just won pitcher of the year. And she was like, no way. That's awesome. <laughs> and we just kind of like celebrated in a parking lot for like five seconds. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, it was something that I, I really wanted to win. I was hoping I, I'd get the opportunity to do so. And uh, I was really excited when it happened. It was really fun to watch all year, especially as a guy that started on opening day and then winning the highest honor in the league, obviously, and pitching the final game of the season two in the playoffs. I guess thinking about your game, it was a rocky start to the season, but right around May, it was like you kind of flipped a switch. Where do you feel like the turning point kind of came in your season? And what do you think are some of the biggest strides you've made as a pitcher this year? Yeah, uh, I think one of the biggest turning points of the season was uh, my outing in Portland. The first time we went to Portland, I uh, went like two innings. It was a terrible outing. It, I was throwing balls. I was walking guys. I was giving up hits. It was the worst outing of the year. And at that point, I don't know what happened. I didn't really change much. It was more just, I guess, a, a switch flipped in my head. And it was kind of like, hey, let's get moving a little bit and focus on some different things. And uh, as far as like how – how I felt like I developed this season. I thought I got a lot better at just kind of being a pitcher. Uh, I kind of learned how to throw in different situations, what to throw in different situations, how to control uh, what I can control while I'm on the mound and uh, go from there. I got a little bit better with my pitches, but uh, ultimately it was just kind of learning how Richard Fitz can be the best, uh, best he can be out there. Well, we definitely saw the best version of, of Richard Fitz, but this was a staff that led the league in all of double A for that matter in ERA and, as someone that spent, again, the entire season here from opening day, thinking about some of the guys you pitched around, even beginning with Will Warren and Clayton Beater, who got call-ups, and then the likes of Chase Hampton, Drew Thorpe, uh, who got call-ups to Somerset, and Blaine was here all year, too. I mean, what was it like being a part of this staff that was just had a historic season behind the leadership of Grayson Crawford? Yeah, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I think that's a, that's a big part about it. You know, baseball is a game. If you're not having fun, then, you know, what's the point? So, that was a big part of it is all of us were, were having fun together. We're able to kind of bounce things off of each other and starting off with like Will and Beater, like those are great guys, great guys that I got to learn a lot from. I hope they learned something from me. I'm not sure, but uh, having them at the beginning was kind of like a, an introduction to double A because they've been there before. And then whenever it was uh, Hampton and Thorpe that were behind me, it was like, all right, now I'm the veteran and I've got to kind of be a leader in that role too. So it was a lot of fun and, having Crawford there the whole way. I had a good relationship with him and he was, he was awesome. And just kind of teaching us about baseball and about how we can get to a higher level too. Yeah. I wanted to ask about Grayson specifically too, because the two of you go way back as far as, I mean, he, he was, you were on his radar going back to high school and college, but in your professional career, he was your pitching coach last year for almost the entire season when you were in Tampa and then got the late call up to Hudson Valley in 2022. But thinking about the fact that he's been your pitching coach for almost every start of your professional career, what kind of influence has he been over those past couple of years? 
Uh, he's been a great influence. He's been the uh, he's been a, a calming kind of factor for me. Like he, me and him kind of understand how each other work and stuff. So it's made our relationship even better every start. Uh, it's one of those things where if he's making a mound visit to come out and see me, it's probably because he's noticing something that's that's going on. It's not necessarily like a like a hey, let's go calm him down. It's more like hey, like there's something that's happening that's a little weird. Uh, so he go, comes out here. He's awesome. He's he understands how I tick. And then I understand how he ticks and it just makes it uh, makes it really work for us because I feel like I got a lot better this year just because I was able to communicate with Crawford and uh, and really like maximize the time that we had together. And I remember talking to you about this some point during the season. I talked about it a lot on the broadcast, but for those fans that might not know of your relationship with Grayson, obviously the both of you are from Alabama, less than an hour apart from each other uh, where you grew up. When did you first know of Grayson and when, when you got drafted by the Yankees a couple of years ago, when did you kind of first have everything click that uh, you, you'd be seeing a guy that you were pretty familiar with to begin with? Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I knew Grayson a little bit when I got drafted, uh, not much. Uh, then I really like got to know him once I got to the Tarpons and once I got to the Tarpons uh, in Tampa, like really got to know him a little bit. It was like, Hey, like, you're the guy from Alabama, right? He's like, yeah, I am, blah, blah, blah. We got to talking. And uh, then I talked to my high school coach, and he was like, oh, yeah, Grayson Crawford. Like, we uh, we know each other way back. And so then I go to Crawford, and I'm talking to him about that. He's like, oh, yeah, I love him. So we got, like, a – we had a really good connection from the get-go just because we were able to connect back to our Alabama roots. Well, that's pretty key. I mean, like you said, having that familiarity with a pitching coach. But another guy that you had a very good connection with, I feel like, this year was – Another guy that spent a lot of time with you in Tampa back in 2022, and that was Ben Rice. He was called up to Somerset this year in July, and he caught all but one of your starts uh, with Double A. And you always hear the saying from like pitchers saying a catcher can make you look good, but whenever Ben Rice talked about you, he said because of your control that he always touted, you're the type of pitcher that can make him look good. So I thought it was fun to hear that kind of flipped around a little bit by him and obviously touting one of the best elements of your game. What do you have to say about that? And what do you have to say about Ben Rice as a teammate and just a battery mate, a guy you can throw to and know he's going to be receiving you well behind the plate? Yeah, well, for one, I'd say he's probably being humble for, for him <laughs> to say that uh, that I make him look good. But, I mean, because ultimately I think uh, the catcher is the catcher's the most important position on the field. Uh, you know, if you have a really good catcher, and uh, especially with Ben, like able to kind of catch and understand me as a pitcher, kind of kind of be that extension of Crawford, but on the field. Uh, it really helped me kind of understand how I can pitch in the middle of a game from a different perspective, coming from a hitter's perspective. Uh, with Ben being one of the best hitters in Double A this year, like it was really good feedback for me to be able to throw uh, all my games to him and come in between innings and talk about kind of what we wanted to do, attacking the next set of hitters. And uh, you know, he's he's awesome. He's a uh, he's a smart guy, Ivy League guy. He uh, he understands baseball and he understands kind of how how guys work. So he understands how I tick and that, how I can communicate and what words I like to use. So whenever I'm, whenever I'm moving at a good pace, he knows, he knows kind of what to do. And then whenever I'm kind of struggling a little bit, he knows to step back and like really evaluate what we're doing. And he kind of came in around halfway through the season, but in the first half of the year, uh, we were working with Austin Wells a lot. And it's kind of been funny to see his progression going from Somerset to AAA and then the big leagues by the end of the year, and you heard a lot of the pitchers up there for the Yankees talk about what it's like having him call a game and what he's like to work with behind the plate, especially for a guy like you that was very raw into your time at double A to start the year. What was it like working with Wells, a guy that has been had been here for almost a full calendar year at that point? Uh, what kind of receiver is he to work with for you? Wells is one of the funnest guys I've ever been around. He <laughs> is he is bouncing off the walls. He's like the Energizer Bunny. So <laughs> I I love that just because like he, if I'm stressed out in a situation, I can look at him. He's pumping me up right there. Like he's he's calm. He's every like he's calm but energetic at the same time. He's never stressed about the game. So for that, he was unbelievable. I love throwing to him. Rice was along the same lines of that whenever he got there too. And it's no surprise that whenever he got to the bigs, that nothing slowed down. Well, we're only a couple weeks out of the season now, and, and you mentioned a little bit of relaxation. You got to unwind a little bit, but there's still a lot of work being done. We've seen some weight training videos on social media. You mentioned you just got done lifting. How much work is going in right now to set you up for success 
going into next year? And then when do you kind of flip that switch before spring training when you head down to Tampa and really start to gear up for 2024? Yeah, so uh, I would, I guess, describe it as uh, I finished that last game of the year and I didn't work out right after the game. Took probably three days off of just like, hey, let's get home, relax. I got to unpack. So I pretty much got a whole workout and just carrying up the stairs, carrying all my stuff up the stairs. But after that, I felt like I was on ground zero and let's, let's rebuild from here. So I started working out uh, like last Thursday and I'm, I'm going as hard as I can. I'm working out. I'm so sore. I can barely get off the couch whenever I sit down. Uh, so I'm, I'm destroying my body right now just to try and get as strong as I can. I'm taking off from throwing. And then whenever I start throwing, that's when I'm going to start really building up and getting ready for spring training and uh, hopefully add some velo and really, uh, really kind of learn my, my pitches a little bit more and really get them more consistent. How different is the weight training now in the off season compared to what you did in season? Cause I know you said during the season, it was a lot of things that kind of helped with your actual motion and your mechanics of, you know, you on the field, but during the off season, is it strictly on putting strength and muscle on and just being able to throw harder or how different is it? Uh, I would describe the in season uh, workouts as being more of like a, a maintain to a little bit better. You know, like we're getting like a one percent stronger a day, that kind of thing. Which is because you don't want to go kill yourself in the weight room. Like I need to be able to stand up before my start. You know, so. Uh, but right now it's all just like I'm trying to get as strong as fast as possible. So I'm doing a lot of like speed work. I'm doing a lot of uh, a lot of strength training, and it's all pretty much just trying to do as much as we can in the time that we have while I'm not throwing. Well, there's a lot of uh, success over these first couple of seasons for you in the Yankees organization. That is the Eastern League Pitcher of the Year in 2023. Richard Fitz looking to follow up what was a phenomenal campaign this year and hopefully even more next year in testing the upper levels of the Yankee system. So, Richard, thank you so much for everything, taking some time, take some rest in the offseason, don't lift too much, and uh, thank you so much for taking some time to catch up here. 